RSVP with Lori, where everything expressed is my opinion, not the law. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you'll know when I upload new videos. Thanks. In 1861, as the Civil War raged, young Sam Davis left his home and family in Smyrna and went away to join the Confederate Army. The Davis home is still here, a museum now, but Executive Director Bethany Hawkins says it's more than that, just as there's more to Sam Davis's story. And he was captured in November of 1863 down near Pulaski, Tennessee. And the commanding general uh, saw the information that Sam was carrying, and it was very detailed, and it had to have come from his desk, and he wanted to know Sam's source. So he told him if he would give him the name of his informant, that he would be set free, and he refused to do so. And so they gave him three days to think about it, um, with a death sentence hanging over his head, and he still refused. And um, while standing on the gallows, uh, awaiting execution, they gave him one more chance um, to give up his informant, and he said, if I had a thousand lives to live, I would give them all rather than betray a friend and so they hung him at the age of 21. And so the story and the place are preserved. So it's important that people see the way uh, Middle Tennesseans in the 19th century lived. Um, this is not a grand mansion. It's a farmhouse. There are several of them around um, in Rutherford County that look very similar to this. Um, there's a lot of them who have been lost over the years to subdivisions and, and Percy Priest Lake. And so it's important that, that the architectural style is uh, preserved. But also, we have 168 acres sitting in the middle of the fastest growing county um, in, in the nation, one of the fastest growing counties in the nation. And pretty soon, this may be the only green space um, there is in our county. So uh, we think it's important to, to keep that as well. The Davis home is here, a home that teemed with life. It was a farmhouse, basically. Um, they were well enough off to have a parlor, which was kept shut off from the rest of the house, where they had um, some of their nicer pieces. Um, but even the daily sitting parlor has a bed in it, so they would have had people sleeping in there. Um, they had a total of 13 children, um, Sam's father did. Um, he had four children with his first wife, and then Sam was the oldest of nine. Um, so this was a home with lots of kids. And so there are lots of bedrooms and lots of beds and trundle beds for babies. And um, it was very much a family home. And um, the family room is sort of the heart of the house. And that's where the family spent most of their time. Um, and also was the parents' bedroom. Um, so they utilized pretty much all the space they had. Just a few yards from the house that was so full of life, a reminder of death. Tour guide Clarence Elkins says Sam Davis is buried here. When Sam, after he was killed, they brought the body back to Sperna and he was buried in a cemetery across the creek and, and his mother wanted the body brought back to the farm and so about a year later his body was brought back here. The monument was partly paid for by fellow Coleman scouts that wanted to do something to honor him after the war and so the monument was, was put up in, in the cemetery. Well, the cemetery is only one place here on the property, of course. And as you stand here in front of the house, it's a little bit hard to get the feel of the way things were when Sam Davis lived here in the 1860s. So, a miniature of the place was built that showed how it looked as a working farm all those years ago. And it was placed right smack dab in the middle of a brand new museum. It allowed us to take the story of Sam Davis and really expand it um, beyond just the story. We're able to put him in context, to let people know what was going on in the Civil War in Middle Tennessee, why these scouts were important um, to the story, what the climate was uh, around Smyrna and Murfreesboro and um, Nashville. Um, at the time, we're also able to showcase a lot of our Civil War artifacts, which came to us in the 1940s and 50s when people were getting rid of Grandpa's stuff. And um, we have some great Confederate uniforms. We have the first Confederate flag made in Rutherford County. Um, a lot of uh, rifles and medical equipment and things like that, which have been in storage for about 10 years. And so we're able to bring those out and showcase them. Um, and we also get to tell people the story of Sam Davis in different ways. Um, they get to really explore it more on their own. Um, we also talk about why Sam Davis is remembered, why the Sam Davis home is here, and about his popularity in the 1890s um, through the 1920s, and that's why this place was saved in 1927. 
The artifacts in the museum, the house and grounds, are fascinating. But more fascinating than the things that are here is the young man who lived here, Sam Davis. Um, well, his story is a great story of, of honor and duty and standing up for something you believe in um, in the face of um, unsurmountable odds and just uh, being true to something that you believe in, whether the cause is right or not. Um, he was true to, to his beliefs and um, we think that has a lot to say for young people today. Older people too. Anyone who feels the need to be inspired by courage can find it remembered at the Sam Davis home in Smyrna. That was a tour of the museum and here we have the gift shop. What I find a little disturbing is the fact that the South does celebrate the Confederate flag and Confederate soldiers and just that entire era as if it is something to be celebrated. The, you know, dehumanizing of black people as a whole is still celebrated in the South. And you know, I know some people may say, well, why would you visit somewhere like this? I really do enjoy learning the process, you know, in learning about all aspects, every side of the spectrum. As you can see, they're still selling the Confederate flag. People wave it proudly here. And while it was sad, I learned a lot. Uh, this is the grounds. This is where we had the tea party. So as you can see, it was a small tea party. I think it was a party of seven that was expected. Uh, they were going to have a barn dance later on that evening. So um, the outside was decorated. They have the rocking chairs that you can make donations and get your name added to the chair. And, you know, as I walk down, I'm walking towards the slave house that was on the property. And I don't think I got any video of it, but right near the slave house, there was an overseer's house. And that's the person that's uh, there to watch the slaves, make sure nobody tries to escape and things like that. So just the fact that, you know, so many white people thought that this behavior was okay to actually enslave another human being uh, based on their what they needed out of life it is bothersome it's very bothersome and then there were two young girls that were also at the tea party that were in the museum and everything they saw they kept saying oh this is so cool this is so cool and you know i wanted to speak to them but i just didn't have the energy nor the time to explain how no this house isn't really cool you know, how would you feel if your family members were treated this way? And, uh, you know, with that being said, I, I really want to learn more about slavery and those days. And even though it might hurt to know or even imagine, you know, how people were treated, I do, um, I am thankful that I'm able to learn you know, these lessons in life. And um, like I said, this is my new series, A Cup of Gratitude. Each and every Sunday, I will upload a video, either me attending a tea party, having tea at home, or I am going to have virtual visitors for the tea party. Um, again, A Cup of Gratitude. Those that know me know that I had a public tea party for eight years. And I'm, I am, I think I have made the decision either next year or 2023, I am going to start back having the annual tea party, whether it's two people or 200 people is still to be determined, but I am going to start that because I continued that tea party in memory of my mother. And, you know, I don't want to stop doing it. I don't. Um, I didn't stop believing in friendship among women, even though many of my friendships have changed. I do believe in friendship among women. I do believe that it's important. I do believe that it's possible and that it can be successful and it will be successful. So if you're interested in being a guest for a cup of gratitude, please feel free to email me at RSVP with Lori. That's RSVP with Lori at gmail.com. Um, make a comment below. 
or um, shoot me a text if you have my number. But yes, this was a small tea party at the Sam Davis Museum in Smyrna, Tennessee. Um, it was okay. We, I didn't really talk to the ladies much. There was no real organization or any activities that were going on. So I just uh, made most of my day visiting the museum. And hopefully I gave you guys a little lesson regarding slavery here, the uh, Civil War, and both sides of the Confederate soldiers, as well as, um, sorry, the Confederate soldiers that Sam Davis was and how he's deemed as a hero because he wouldn't, what we call today, snitch on a uh, fellow soldier that had given him those documents that he was transporting which he was document he was carrying the documents but he wouldn't confess to being a spy but he was hung and he's considered the confederate hero was i the only one dressed up yes absolutely but i don't mind i enjoy getting dressed up for tea parties this is my new series a cup of gratitude each and every sunday i will post a video uh either me attending a tea party having tea at home and i will have virtual guests for the tea party if you're interested please dm me email me text me or get in touch with me comment below if you're interested in being a guest thanks for watching until the end